Okay, so we're just not. Uh, okay, I'll bring this order, uh, this meeting to order for September the 1st, 2020. <clears throat> Resolve the agenda for the September 1st, 2020 regular meeting of council be adopted as received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Delorier. All in favor? It's carried. We have Councillor Gray attending by Zoom, so I'll just watch his, uh, his hand if it goes up. Result of the minutes of the August 18, 2020 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Deputy Mayor with Tony, seconded by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result of the regular meeting be closed and the public hearing for bylaw 15 2020 be open. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by the Premier Wintoni. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. So I'll call this public hearing to order. The purpose of the hearing is to hear representation for or against the bylaw 15 2020 for a zoning amendment to rezone an area in the town of Swan River from RMH, Residential Mobile Home Zone, to RT, Residential 2, Family Zone. All requirements of Section 741 of the Planning Act have been adhered to. I request that any person making representation to the hearing state the name and civic address. So there will be no one making representation. So upon hearing all persons, not present, I guess, uh, may I will adjourn the hearing and you will reconvene. Six, sorry. Six point one, resolved that the building permits 6420 through 6920 with a total estimated value of $685,000 be received, moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 6-2. Resolved the application for variance or 3, 2020 be received and public hearing be held on September the 15th, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? Councilor Gray. Can we have a, a, another copy of that sent out to us? I, I couldn't read it on board back or on uh, all net. Okay, you, you want a copy just emailed to you then, Councillor Gray? I don't care how it comes to me as long as I read it. Okay, so you can take care of that. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.1. Resolved that the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 721. Result of the July 2020 Swan River Handy Transit Ban Report be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, 7.3 Council uh, and CEO reports. Start with uh, Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Uh, we recently had our RISE meeting just to get an update and our new EDO is fitting in quite nicely. You'll see some advertising of economic development, which is also working on connecting with uh, 
business owners and uh, various businesses within the valley, uh, which is exciting to see. And uh, yeah, she's fitting in quite nicely. We'll see what the what uh, what the future brings. Um, that is all I have at the moment. Okay, Councillor White. A question, uh, Deputy Mayor: Would you consider? Asking your new EDO to come to a council meeting so we could meet her and she could meet us. Absolutely, and that's on her agenda as well to attend council meetings. I do believe that she's been at uh, RM of Mountain and she is making her rounds. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, and then I would comment that I did uh, have an opportunity to sit with uh, Miss Gray uh, a few weeks ago and uh, that uh, she is going to be a great asset to have in our uh, valley and community. And she did state that, uh, as to that, uh, Councillor White, that she will be uh, coming forth to uh, meet with uh, Council. Council Mayor. Thank you, Council, uh, Deputy Mayor Latoni. Um, Council Morio. Uh, no meetings uh, this uh, period, just uh, two nights of CEO interviews, and I've got a third one scheduled. So. Hopefully they're successful and uh, we'll find this new CEO in the next short uh, period of time. Okay, thank you. Councillor Friesen. Uh, I also attended the uh, interviews for the CEO. Uh, we a care meeting on the 24th and they're discussing their AGM, which they're feeling will have to be done by Zoom. Um, that's it. Okay, thank you. Councillor uh, Gray. Um, two things out of ours. Um, the first is we've uh, we've had a number of settlement services meetings. One of our long-serving board members and members has moved to Nipwa, um, which is, I think, a little... Um, Surprising. In fact, his comment was that it was uh, that if he was older, he would have stayed in Swan River, uh, but he thought it was time for other opportunities. So I think we're going to need to um, look at some of that. Um, the second, just in following up on the rise issue, um, LGD Mountain have decided not to come back in this year. They may or may not come back in next year. Um, there are some other issues coming up in terms of uh, tourism dollars, but in terms of Rise's budget, uh, I think there's going to need to be a consideration as to whether or not or how we're going to make up the about $9,000 that um, LGD Mountain was expected to make as part of this year's contribution. That's it. Oh, the only other thing, um, you, you keep freezing. So I'm wondering if we can talk to somebody about upgrading our internet service at the town office. Okay. Um, do I have Councillor White? Just a question there, Councillor. Help me, but I believe Mountain had agreed, passed a motion, and accepted to join Rise and put in X number of dollars. And now they've decided to pull out. Is there no contractual obligation on them to stay in when they pass that? And because of their passing it, I'm sure that contributed to what we did with our team. Well, I, I don't think there's a contractual agreement because we don't have a contract. Uh, there is an agreement. Uh, and they passed the resolution, uh, but that they then rescinded it, I think, before everybody else had passed theirs. So I'm, I, it is what it is, in my view. Thank you. Um, on the rise, you know, with, with the shortfall for Mountain, is it possible that there might be uh, on the reserve for 2020, perhaps, if it's needed? It's possible. I just alert you to that. One way or another, there are issues because if we reduce reserves, that's going to cause its own set of issues. Right. Uh, but uh, I just alert you that there's a shortfall potentially in that budget. Okay. Now, the good news is we may we may actually be underspending in some areas, and it took us a little while longer to get the EDO file, and so it may well be that it'll balance. I don't think we've fi seen a final number on that. Right. Okay. Thank you. And that's it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Councillor White. I've had uh, the opportunity to have two uh, teleconferences with Prim on the health for the last week. And obviously, COVID is uh, the number one topic of discussion and the concerns that the, the parkland and obviously Manitoba has. 
I hate to be simplistic, but it, it seems simple to me that if we wear a mask and keep distancing, wash regularly, wash our hands, this certainly all the evidence that I have read, the academic stuff, not the uh, people who tend to be hyperbole, uh, it's working in countries. I talked to a friend of mine last night in Thailand, there's 60 million people, 30 million, a lot. No cases of COVID, and they attribute that completely to the mask. So I would encourage our community to continue to have the social distancing and wear the masks. I also uh, had the pleasure of going uh, to meet and discuss with a young person who wants to become a physician assistant and hopefully come back to the Swan River Valley. She's a Swan Valley person, married to a, a farmer from the Swan Valley, so I remain extremely optimistic on that one. I went to the 4-H draw today for the beef. That was interesting to say the least. And in discussion today about the airport commission, I'm sure uh, Deputy Mayor Latoli is thinking about it. Uh, there's a possibility of buying some new technologies where the pilots would land if I go over a ride in the middle of the truck. And they could fill up their gas, trucks, boats, airplanes on site. And as, there's two advantages to that. One is uh, our guy doesn't have to go out and go back to do that. So we're going to save money right there. And the second idea that slipped into our minds was that the, with the increase in gas sales this year with, with the uh, airplanes that carry the gas around the fire planes, we probably made more profit and will save money by not having to go out. Pilots hypothetically might be more likely to come and then we could use that money, those money saved by the travel uh, and uh, the monies we earned on the gasoline to buy a better grade of gasoline registering the gas tanks. What does it cost? Cost. Are you thinking about a card lock system? Is that a card lock system? So if you have a high end card lock system, everything becomes efficient. We save a lot of money. Any guess? Is it 10,000 a year to send a guy out there? Uh, actually, I'm waiting on a second price. To, uh, we already received one price for a, a pretty good card lock system, but I'm waiting for a second price now for six weeks. So I have to give them a deadline, or I'll be giving the airport commission just one price. Do you know how much it costs us, uh, the community, the G4, to send our staff out there to, to check their coach for last year? Uh, Gas them up. Um, Best guess. I think it's 18,000 maybe. How many? 18,000 maybe. 18,000? I think that's the full admit. I think Terry may be able to answer that, but uh, $18,000 might be for all of our administration costs. That's a nice number that could go towards the high end car lock system and keep our staff in the valley working on local issues. So just a thought, which I'm sure John will have up on his, uh, Deputy Mayor John will have on his agenda for next week. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Wichelman. And just further to add to that, yes, that is something that we've been strongly um, advocating for and working on. And I assure you that at, that, uh, at our next airport commission, that that will be an item up for debate. And like uh, Mr. Poole did mention, we're just waiting on one more quotation for our system. So we are going to see improved, um, improved fuel consumption. Um, without having to call out staff at all hours of the day or night um, and the ability to pay right at the pump. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor DeLaurier. Um, Monday and Tuesday had the CAO interviews, which already, already been mentioned, and Friday, last Friday, had a uh, meeting with some library board members and staff regarding some staffing issues at the library. Other than that, no, uh, no, uh, not much for me. Uh, I guess that today, as you are all aware, that the uh, Minnetonas 4-H Beef Club uh, finalized their raffle, um, uh, which was fundraising efforts towards the CT scanner for the Swan Valley. And uh, they did the raffle this afternoon at 5 p.m. I'm happy to say that the club uh, raised uh, $14,940 uh, that will go towards the CT scanner project. Um, I thank the club for their outstanding work. 
the great part about it is that you know include the whole valley and beyond as far as the fundraising goes, but also included young people that got involved with this. And those young people that were there today, they were so uh, involved from the process right from the very beginning uh, and right to now and, and wherever it takes them down the road. So definitely a great way for uh, fundraising efforts towards the CT scanner uh, uh, reality as we move forward. So uh, congratulations to them uh, with uh, being part of this huge community effort. Um, good news for us, uh, we received uh, the Lagoon Study Grant from the province as well as uh, we did receive the, or receiving a grant for the, the water treatment P, uh, PLC. Uh, upgrade, so that's good news for us as well. So thank you to to that uh, put those applications in and got that work done. So that's it for me. Um, anything for you, uh, Ms. Hinkleman? Um, so tax notices have gone out. I think more people have received them. Um, I um, we have some issues after the storm last week with phones and internet and debit and a lot, but I think we're sorted out and back operating. Um, other than that, we're going to have a spot going now and the pool project will get started next week. So we'll have contractors in the wellness center starting next week. Uh, yeah, they will be here on Tuesday. Okay, perfect. On Tuesday. Okay. Thank you. Any questions on that, I guess, from any members of council? Okay. All right, so moving on, 8.1, speaking of the Wellness Center. Resolved that the Town of Swanover accept the proposal to replace the hot tub liner from Paradise Leisure Skates with 60740 and $0.25 cents plus taxes. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Delorier. Discussion. Okay, Councilor Delorier and then Councilor Morio. Um, as part of your process to, to get the, uh, the bids, um, was there, uh, uh, did you look at references as far as this company, check the references and, and they came back thumbs up? Yeah, so this company actually did our replacement liner a couple years ago. They were the ones that replaced the main pool liner. Um, and then we also, uh, they did this exact waterproofing system on three hot tubs, ones in the Holiday Inn in Saskatoon. One was West, uh, Best Western Premier in Prince Albert, and then there's another one in Fairfield in Sweet Center Regina. And two out of three said it's they have no issues, it, it's working the way they said it was, and then the, the third one actually replaced their whole hot tub. It was, that was their final the gate, it had nothing to do with the system, it was just, they were replacing it, that was just kind of their bad day until they did. So there was a top of maintenance in both buildings, and they have no issues with it. Okay. And just for those people that are not uh, seeing who was on video here tonight, um, uh, our, uh, Brendan Fornorchuk is answering those questions. Councillor, um, okay, so Councillor Morio and Councillor Gray. Um, I see that you had uh, two companies that inquired and stuff like that, and the second one was Recre Western Recreation, and they declined to, after further discussion, which you declined to submit a proposal. Did they say why they declined? Or? Uh, just for the simple fact of their workload, I believe, and then also just because we've had problems in the past and they couldn't guarantee that they could, they could fix it, so they didn't want people to kind of get into that. But mo mostly because of the workload, they just didn't have the, have the capabilities to get down and do it. Okay, thank you. Councilor Gray. I think he's froze on there. Are you back with us, Councillor Gray? Yes. Okay, you're on. I didn't, I didn't hear any of Councillor Morio's comments, and I didn't hear the last half, Mr. Fedorchuk. Okay. Um, froze again. Councillor Gray, can you, or I mean, sorry, Councillor Morio, can you uh, kind of? Go back to that again, please. I just asked uh, Mr. Fedorchuk uh, that there was two uh, companies that inquired about the uh, the project, and one was Western Recreation, and then after a discussion, they declined um, to submit a bid. And I just asked why was that. Go ahead, Mr. Fedorchuk. 
Uh, essentially, it's because their their workload is too heavy, and then they they obviously heard about the problem we've had in the past, and they didn't uh, didn't uh, want to deal with them, but mostly because of the workload. Did you get that? I did. Okay, go ahead. So what? In terms of Mr. Fedorchuk, what was the he, he, two out of three said no issues. What was the one out of three? Oh, at the, the record checks? Yes. Uh, the one out of three that, that uh, replaced their hot tub was just on the, that was their prime from the get-go. They decided to use it for the time they replaced it when we were doing it. I, I didn't hear it. Uh, it was all garbled. Is he near a microphone? <laughs> okay, so uh, I'll talk about it. Um, the hot tub, the one that had an issue with it, or really didn't have an issue, but they had plans to replace their hot tub already. That was just a band-aid five years before until they could get their new hot tub replaced. Okay. So I do have some questions. Yeah. I, I thought I thought we had agreed that when these proposed these matters came forward, we were gonna get the proposals as well. Am I am I forgetting something? I, I Council only agrees or passes by resolution, so I, I don't know what that, that is, what you're referring to. Council Delore raised it as a request last time that we had a proposal. I'm, I'm not aware of that, but go ahead, Councilor. I think what he was referring to, yeah, I, I had asked that if we could, that we, we see, I, I remember right, I, I do recall now after requesting that, but uh, as far as seeing uh, seeing what their what their proposals were, um, or what, what our request was. And it was agreed that that's uh, from administration that we had provided before they put the um, material to us. Okay. So... It, I haven't seen that. Okay. So then... The second... Go ahead. I've got a series of questions. So, so the second question is, how do we determine these four? Um, the two were just local competitors. Paradise had uh, mentioned that they'd be interested in the job and they're installing the liner. Western Rec's always been a competitor close to our Winnipeg. And then the other two were just cool companies that uh, were relevant that I contacted. Okay, are there other companies, like how did we pick these four out of? The 200 that are around Western Canada. Uh, just that's like what I'm asking. Size and um, that's pretty well it. Just size and a couple companies just to reference to see if they'd be interested. It was an email that went out to three or four companies that kind of were referenced uh, highly on Google that were just there. Is there a reason we didn't use a tender process or an open advertisement? Because we were looking for proposals because we weren't sure what we were going what? as far as exact specifications. So we're just looking for proposals at that point. I think that yeah, I think that comment. Hello. Yeah. What, what did you catch? We lost the. Uh, connection with Councillor Gray. There we are. Okay, what, what did you catch out of that? Nothing. Okay, so it froze right after I was done. The reason why we didn't tender is we were looking for requests for proposals because we weren't sure exactly how it was going to be fixed or what method was used, so we can just uh, put a request out for proposals on how to fix it. Okay, but we can do that by an open process. We don't have to invite tenders or invite proposals. We can. The procurement uh, policy does allow for invitations. Decision well, uh, just to invite uh, a select amount of companies. That was decided back in the, in the summer, I believe, is to do the proposals, not to uh, spec up the fix because we are not more experts. <laughs> At least I am not. Okay, so. Uh, have, okay, I've got two more questions. And then, ha have we determined that there are no issues with the pipes? 
Uh, yes, we have. There's a report coming from Canadian Heat Protection. He's uh, he verbally acknowledged that the pipes were good, and the report was supposed to be here this afternoon to forward, but uh, he got delayed in travel. So he is confirmed though that there's no leaks in the pipes. Oh, it shouldn't. Okay. And lastly, what if any guarantee does this does this proposal have? Uh, as far as guarantees go, this proposal, um, they're unable to guarantee 100 percent. It's stated in their first um, kind of their first statement of the proposal. Uh, that's kind of why Red Western Rec wouldn't touch it, is because they couldn't guarantee 100 percent that this would um, like it would be kind of As far as any company guaranteeing 100 percent that they can repair the leak without pouring a new tank, I think it's very unlikely that you'll get that. However, the product that's going in is is warranty for 10 years for chipping, all that kind of thing, and they have a plan as far as um, as far as preparing the surface and ensuring that there's no leaks. They just can't 100 percent guarantee it. Okay. Uh, can you explain to council uh, the uh, the hot tub liner? What that process looks like? What the current liner is, or the proposed? The proposed. The proposed. So essentially, what they're looking at doing is chipping out all the tile in the hot tub vessel, and they're going to use this called a base creep, and they're going to put a water waterproof membrane around the whole tank, on top of the stainless steel, everything. And then on top of that, there's a thermal plastic finish that's essentially melted in place where it needs to be. And then we'll extend fittings and flanges and everything we need to do uh, to secure that seal. So and essentially the finished finished product is a colored, it's a colored plastic PVC. Okay. But it's highly, highly chemical resistant, highly heat resistant. It's, it's very well, uh, very, the references come back very well on it. Okay. Any further questions? Okay, Councillor Duluria. So, no company gave us any kind of guarantee on this. No. And so, and they'd only be willing to guarantee basically if we start from scratch. Reconstruction, yeah. What? What? What are? The, what are the? What's the estimate on that? We. When we replaced the liner in the big pool, there would have been no guarantee then either, correct? That one would have been warrantied by by our first company, uh, correct? Yeah. Yeah. That was the installation. Okay. 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 Mr. Fedorchuk, do we have any estimate of or uh, any number, I guess, of what the original hot tub? Um, Cost was. I'd have to look at. Not sure how bad. It's in the neighborhood of about five hundred thousand. Okay. And what I I remember that yeah. during that stage it was about five hundred thousand dollars. Okay. okay. I have one other question, Your Worship. Yeah, go ahead. Have we checked with council because our original plan was to remove it so that we would have the ability to have engineers review it for our lawsuit? If we simply cover it up, have we checked with council as to what effect that will have? Uh, yeah, we have, and he's aware. Um, we're just going to document everything as we go. There'll be pictures taken in front of him to document everything. And he has no information. Okay. Uh, I'll play this the opportunity to come and have a look before we get started. Okay. All right. For the questions, all in favor? Sorry. Opposed? Abstain? I'm in favor. I did have one more question, but okay. Well, that's okay. Okay. It's carried. Okay. Ten point one. Result. I Councilor, if I, can, if I can just have that my vote recorded against it. It wasn't asked to be recorded, but it's noted. Okay. 10.1. Resolved that council's calls be hereby approved for payment 
General Counts check number 2655A to number 26617 for a total of 351,962 and 62 cents. Payroll Counts checks number 4714 to number 4720 for a total of 99,375 and 60 cents. Direct deposits totaling $800 and $25. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? Councilor Morio. Um, the check number 2655, what is mechanic my OPO registration? Uh, that's for air conditioning uh, certification. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11.1. .1. Resolve the bylaw number 15, 2020, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to amend the town of Swan River zoning bylaw number 9, 2004, reclassifying lots 33 to 42 plan. 1017 Dauphin Land Title Office from RMH Residential Mobile Home Zone to RT Residential Two Family Zone to be read a second time. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Oh, well, I have discussion. Okay, go ahead. I, again, I speak against this resolution. I've said, said this before, this is exactly the problem we have. These sites are not large enough for two family dwellings. They're mobile home dwellings. The entire site should be resurveyed and replanned. But um, I, I've made the point before, I'm not gonna belabor it, uh, but I wanna put that on record. I would like a recorded vote. Okay. Uh, further discussion? Okay, all in favor, record vote. Opposed? You got that? It's carried. That was the second reading, so 11.2. Resolved that bylaw number 15, 2020, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, which have been amend the town of Swan River zoning bylaw number 9 2004 reclassifying lots 33 to 42 number plan 1017 Dolphin land title office from rmh residential mobile home zone to rt residential two family zone be read a third time and passed this is moved by councillor white seconded by councillor morio discussion councillor gray it's a matter of procedure. I, I thought we had said we weren't going to do double readings except in emergent circumstances or with the consent of everyone. I could be wrong. I thought that was our policy, our procedures by law. Uh, no, we can, we can pass on the third. Uh, uh, no, no, we have, we have the capacity to do it, but I thought we'd agreed we weren't going to do it. But I, I, I raise it only. It's not an issue. It's within the capacity of council. Uh, I think that in most cases, if it's uh, on, um, we, we did just have a discussion about that. If it was going to be on certain bylaws, saying like if we're changing building uh, the building bylaw or code, or, or if there is some other bylaws within the community that would have uh, some impact, then we would probably consider having uh, this the first, second, and third reading being uh, delayed. Maybe I forgot. That's fine. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result of pursuance of sections 152 and 3 of the Municipal Act, Municipal Act Council of Goals Committee, and close the meeting to the public. Uh, we have water agreement there to discuss the union negotiations, developer negotiations as well. Moved by Deputy Mayor Antoni, second by Councilor White. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. We're in camera. 